Hello everyone. So I'm so excited to film this video today because I'm going to be recommending my favorite romance books. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that like this year I have really started to get into romance and it's definitely one of my favorite genres, if not my favorite genre, which is so crazy because a few years ago I was like, ew, romance. I didn't think I would enjoy romance books. And here we are. <laughs> it literally gives me so much happiness. I love reading about people in love. I love how easy romance books are to read and I'm loving getting more into it and discovering all the different subgenres and what I like and everything. There's a whole world out there waiting for you to explore it. So it's honestly stunning and I'm so thankful for it. And I wanted to talk about some of my favorites. I've also listened to some stunning romance audiobooks and the place where I listen to my audiobooks is Audible, who is the sponsor of today's video, which is so exciting because I love them and I use them all the time. So if you haven't heard me talk about Audible before, like I said, that is where I listen to my audiobooks. But they don't just have audiobooks. Some of the things included in the Audible Plus catalog are audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, sleep tracks for better rest, and so much more. And basically every month Audible members get one free audiobook and full access to their Plus catalog. And there are also a lot of like Audible exclusive audiobooks, so you can only listen to the audiobook through Audible. And one of those is actually my first recommendation, which is From the Cove with Love by Mariana Zapata. It is stunning. And I listened to the audiobook a few years ago now, but it has just stuck with me because it was such a beautiful story and the audiobook was super well done, really well narrated and really engaging. And I just remember going on my walk, listening to the audiobook and just having the best time ever. So basically, if you didn't know, Mariana Zapata is the queen of slow burn romance. And this book specifically is a slow burn hate to love sports romance. And basically it's about our main character Jasmine who is a figure skater and she is forced to partner with Ivan Lukov who she hates as figure skating partners. I obviously just love that trope where two people who hate each other are forced to like work together for some reason and they're forced to spend a lot of time together and then they fall in love and it's just stunning. Like I said this is a slow burn so it is quite a slow burn like you know there's not much smut or anything like that but the pining the slow build up of it all is just next level and I love these characters so much. I love Jasmine as a main character, Ivan Lukov, can you marry me, you know what I mean. It's stunning and also I love how it's not just about the romance, there's definitely other aspects of the characters lives that are discussed in the book. For example Jasmine has quite complicated relationships with her family that she's working through and she also is dealing with this stalker situation and Oh, it is just something. So yes, highly, highly, highly recommend this audiobook. Highly recommend Audible. The Audible app is free to download. You can sync your audiobook across devices so you can pick up where you left off on a different device. And you can get a 30 day free trial of Audible if you use my link, which is audible.com slash books with Chloe or text books with Chloe to 500 500. And discover some amazing audiobooks, podcasts, etc. And you know, like I said, I recommend from the cup with love, you'll have a stunning time. So thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the next recommendation, which is another Mariana Zapata book. I decided to talk about all the Mariana Zapata books in one go because I read three books by her and I've literally loved them all, so I can't wait to read all her other ones. But the next book that I have to recommend by her is All Roads Lead Here, which I read recently. And if you saw the vlog, you know I absolutely adored this book. It's one of my new favorites of all time. Like, it's a joke, honestly. <laughs> It is a sick joke. It's next level. So basically, once again, this is a slow burn romance. And I wouldn't say it's completely hate to love, but the main couple definitely don't like each other when they first meet. <laughs> but it's not like a complete like nemesis situation. But basically this follows Aurora and she's dealing with a lot of changes in her life. So she's dealing with a divorce and she was married to her partner for like 10 years. She's still grieving her mother's death. So she decides that she wants to start a new life in a small town in the mountains. So she rents this garage apartment that belongs to Tobias Rhodes. And that is the love interest in this story, Tobias. So obviously they spend time together. They slowly, slowly form a friendship, which obviously turns into something more. And it's just so beautiful. And I just love like slow burn romances because it's the little moments that really count. So like the slightest touch of the hand could mean everything, you know? I just love a good slow burn romance and Marion is a part of knows how to do it in the best way. This also has the grumpy sunshine dynamics. So Aurora definitely has the sunshine vibes and Rhodes definitely has the grumpy vibes. He definitely keeps himself, doesn't have like too many friends, doesn't really like to open up to people, isn't the nicest person all the time. Like it is stunning because I love when that type of person just becomes obsessed with someone and opens up to that person only. It is 
something. This book literally made me like scream. Me and Caitlin were buddy reading it and we were literally like sending voice notes to each other being like <laughs> there were so many stunning moments in this book. And not only that, like I said, Marina Zapata focuses on other aspects, not just the romance. And I really, really related to Aurora in a lot of ways because obviously she thought she was supposed to be with this one person and she has to deal with that heartbreak and everything. And I just love how this book shows how you can start a new life at any age and be happy. Like, it's stunning. And I also feel like there's a lot of good discussions on grief in this book. Oh, honestly, I'm going to be rereading this soon because I actually read it first on my iPad. And then I decided to buy the physical copy because I needed it. So I'm definitely excited to reread the physical version and annotate my favorite moments and everything. Like, this book is just stunning. This is one of my absolute top recommendations. Like, please. If you want happiness, try it. Okay, so the final Mariana Zapata book that I have to recommend is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, which is another stunning slow burn, hate to love sports romance. And basically this follows Vanessa, who is the personal assistant to Aiden, who is a professional football player. And he's definitely like grumpy and arrogant and he doesn't show that he actually likes Vanessa and stuff. And she's put up with his annoying vibes for years. And she finally decides to quit. And then Aiden ends up showing up on her doorstep one day and asks to marry her. But he wants a fake marriage because the only reason he wants to be married is to avoid deportation. And obviously she's like, what the hell no. But he persuades her, he offers her a lot of money and stuff. And she needs money desperately so she says yes and obviously to make the marriage look realistic they're forced to live together so they spend a lot of time together obviously get to know each other better and you know where that's gonna go so <laughs> once again absolutely stunning romance absolutely stunning story one of my favorite lines ever i've waited my whole life to love you <laughs> is in this book it is beautiful Okay, so now I have to recommend a trilogy, and that is the Brown Sisters trilogy. So basically there's Get Life Chloe Brown, which I don't own at the moment because I lent it to my friend Tess. Take Care Danny Brown and Actor Age Eve Brown. I love all these books, and basically this is a companion series. So each book follows a different sister because there are three Brown sisters. So obviously Chloe Brown, Danny Brown, and Eve Brown. So basically the first book, Get Life Chloe Brown, follows Chloe obviously who has fibromyalgia and she definitely lives life on the safe side because of this. And after nearly dying, she decides to create a list of things she wants to do. And to complete the list, she ends up asking Red, who lives in her building, or I think he works in the building, I can't quite remember. But basically they've like seen each other around and she doesn't like him and she doesn't get the vibe that he likes her either. So they definitely don't like each other in the beginning. But like I said, she asks for his help and it is just stunning. I love Chloe as a main character. I love the progression of their romance. I love Red. He's very like artsy. I think he's an artist. They just have a stunning dynamic. Chloe's such a girl boss. Stunning chronic illness representation. It is beautiful. And I love Tali Hibbert's writing so much. Once again, she's one of my favorite romance authors, obviously. Like, she's just beautiful. Beautiful as a person, beautiful inside and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see the perfect mood to be filming this video right now because I'm in such a, like, loving, giving compliments mood. Well, honestly, that's me always. But, you know, so you guys watching, you're stunning. <laughs> anyway, moving on to Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I think this is my favorite in the series. I just love it. Like, it's so good and basically this follows Danny Brown who's definitely more of like the fun outgoing sister. She has like this fun pink hair and she is just so funny, so witty. She's also bisexual which we love to see and this has the fake dating trope which is one of my absolute favorite tropes in romance and this also has Zafir who is one of my absolute favorite male love interests because he is stunning. <laughs> so basically in a workplace fire drill gone wrong Zafir ends up saving Danny and he picks her up and everything and then people take this cute video and then they go viral because it's a cute video and then people start to ship them and then they decide to fake date because it will benefit them both but she's not interested in a relationship or anything and this is a stunning example of boy obsessed with girl and Sophia literally listens to romance audiobooks like what a king I just love him so much I love Danny so much I love them together so much like honestly just going to my tapped moments I'm like oh my god should I read this right now honestly all these books I want to read right now again because they all just bring me so much happiness and their banter is truly everything. They have my favorite dynamic out of the three books as well. So yeah, just love them. Love this book. And lastly, I have Actor Age Eve Brown to recommend. And this is definitely my least favorite out of the series, but still four stars, like still loved it. Basically, this follows Eve Brown, who definitely doesn't know what she wants to do in life. She's in her late 20s, I believe. And she just feels like she can't get anything right. And basically Eve meets Jacob, who is the owner of a B&B. And they definitely don't have a good first encounter. She ends up hitting him with her car. And then he has like a broken leg, I think. So he needs help around the B&B. So she offers to work for him. So they're forced to work together, even though they definitely don't like each other. But 
you know where that's gonna go. But yeah, this was super cute. I didn't love Jacob as much as I loved Red and Sophia, but I really loved E, and they definitely had a cute dynamic, and the ending of this story was stunning because it wraps up like all three of the books in a really beautiful way. So yes, just love this series so much. And finally, from Talia Hibbert, I want to recommend a novella, and that is Guarding Temptation, which I read recently, and I loved it. So yeah, this is a novella, so really short, I think like 100 pages. And basically, this is about Nina, who has been in love with her brother's best friend for years, James. And obviously they feel like they shouldn't be together because of the fact that he's her brother's best friend. So they try to like suppress their feelings and everything. And obviously there's not too much that goes on. It's mainly about the romance since it is a novella. And I didn't really think I would give it like five stars, but then I read it and I was like, well, five stars. This is everything. I just loved the characters so much. I feel like we did have time to see their romance develop and everything. And they were just so cute, so in love. So honestly, if you're like looking to get into romance, you could just try this because it's really quick and see how you feel. But then also maybe novellas just aren't for you because I know like Jamie, for example, isn't super into romance novellas, but anyway, I just really recommend this. It is so good. Okay, so I guess I'm going through the different authors. So the next author I have is Penelope Douglas. And Penelope Douglas is definitely, you know, you either love or hate her books, but she has quite a few books out there. And I know that I probably wouldn't like most of them <laughs> based on what Jamie has told me because she's read quite a few of them and I just don't think I'm gonna vibe with those books. But I definitely have loved two of her books. So I have Punk 57 to recommend, of course. I read this early this year, absolutely loved it. And then I reread it and and I hated it and everything because I just loved this story. Like it was so fun. So basically this follows Ryan and Misha and they have been like pen pals since the fifth grade and they've never met in real life. And then when they're like 18 or something, Misha ends up seeing Ryan in person and realizes that it's her. And he's kind of like, oh, I actually don't like this girl. And then he ends up transferring to a school and he definitely is like mean to her because he doesn't like her. And he's also bitter because he feels like she lied to him through her letters because he doesn't think they're the same person. Um, and she doesn't know that it's him yet. They basically have a friends to hate to lovers situation going on. So I loved it. It definitely won't be for everyone, but if you vibe it, you vibe it. Like it's so fun and I love them together. Also, Misha is stunning. He has tattoos, a lip ring. Yeah, exactly. They are just super cute. It's a really like addictive to read romance. Like I read it really quickly and I think about it a lot. And the other Penelope Douglas book I have to recommend is Tris Six Venom and this is a sapphic romance. So it follows Clay and Olivia and this is another like bully romance but I wouldn't really call Punk 57 like a bully romance because they're mean to each other but like it's not like super mean. <laughs> but Tris Six Venom is definitely a bully romance because they are really mean to each other. Like there are some moments where I was like oh it's a bit much <laughs> because some of the things they say I was like eh. So definitely like went a bit over the line for me at points, but overall I really loved it. I really loved the characters. It definitely could be hard to read though because there's a lot of like internalized biphobia with the characters because one of the girls doesn't want to admit that she's into girls and she's trying to suppress it. But there were some really stunning and cute moments and once again it's a really addicting read. So even though it's like 500 pages or maybe even 600 pages, I read it really quickly and I loved it. Okay now moving on to The Deal by L. Kennedy. This is the first book in the Off Campus series, which is basically a new adult college romance companion series. So the first book, The Deal, follows Hannah and Garrett. And Hannah is the classic like shy girl, really into her studies. And Garrett is the classic like jock player, college frat boy vibe. And basically he needs help from Hannah to pass one of his classes. And they come up with a deal where she will tutor him and in return, he will give her like sex advice and stuff. So this is a really, really cute romance, really fun romance. Definitely some cringy cliche lines but that's the vibe of the series and you just need to accept it and go into it knowing that and this is a really easy to read romance and they're so cute and I didn't read books two and four of the off-campus series because Jamie has read them and thinks I won't like them so I'm not really gonna waste my time but I did read the score recently which is the third book in the series and loved it I loved this even more than the deal I just love these characters so basically this follows Ali and Ali is friends with Hannah from the first book and Ali has been in a relationship for a few years and they have recently broken up and she's not really into like one night stands and stuff but Dean De Laurentiis is the classic player who has gotten with like everyone on campus and they end up having a one night stand so this is one of my favorite tropes where you know we follow a player who becomes obsessed with one girl and it's just stunning like he is like oh my gosh why am I feeling this way like it is so fun and their dynamic is so good because they have a lot of banter she's definitely kind of like 
okay like he's like oh but i'm just obsessed with you you know like and watching them fall in love is just stunning so loved this so much once again it definitely had some cliche and cringy lines for example there are a lot of like pop culture references that you know are very specific to that time like there's a reference to wrecking ball and stuff but once again it's a fun time although i will say that there are definitely some moments where i'm kind of like oh what's that about because l kennedy can definitely say some weird like ignorant things so i don't love that aspect of the series but the romance. Love it. Okay, then I have to recommend The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. This is such a fun new adult romance and it follows Rhiannon, who is such a girl boss. And basically Rhiannon meets Samson over a dating app and they have like a one night stand and then he never calls her back. So obviously she's like, shut up because she thought they had a connection and everything. And then they end up meeting at a work event because they work at competing dating app businesses and she's like ew it's him and basically he never had a chance to explain himself and explain why he never called back and everything so obviously they reconnect and i love it this is a really good modern romance because obviously it involves dating apps and i just love the characters so much the smut's stunning the romance is stunning like it's so good then of course <laughs> I need to recommend Norm People by Sally Rooney, one of my favorite books of all time. I'm not going to talk too much about this because, well, one, I don't feel like crying. And two, I've talked about this book so much on my channel. But basically, if you don't know, this follows Marianne and Connell. And we basically follow them from high school to adults. So basically in high school, they hook up, but they don't tell anyone. Like, it's definitely a secret because Marianne is like a loner. Connell is very, like, well-liked and everything. And he wants to keep it a secret. And then we follow them through college and then them when they're older and basically it's about two people who can't stay away from each other no matter how hard they try and this definitely isn't like a stereotypical romance the way that Sally Rooney writes is stunning like she just gets it and I love Marianne and Connell so much and they have the individual struggles that they're dealing with outside of their relationship and I really loved that aspect of the book as well it's just something it really is <laughs> it just means so much to me so yeah the next book I have to recommend is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. And like normal people, this isn't a stereotypical romance. Basically, this is a beautiful and powerful novel about the true and sometimes painful depths of love. This is just so beautifully written. It's actually written in second person, which I'm not usually a fan of, but the author did a really, really good job at it. I just want to read one of the quotes. You two are in something. I don't know what it is, but you guys are in something. Some people call it a relationship. Some call it friendship. Some call it love. But you two, you two are in something. Oh my god, this book is just beautiful and it's also about these two characters who are obviously in love but are also dealing with trying to be happy in a world that you know has racism they have a lot of trauma and they find it difficult to overcome that trauma it's about clinging to love in a world heavy with injustice so it's just so good like it's literally stunning and the characters are both artists one is a dancer and one is a photographer this is also really short this is less than 150 pages so you can read it really quickly i read it in one sitting loved it it was really an experience so of course i had to talk about this as well okay now i wanted to talk about a few graphic novels so first i have fangs by sarah anderson and this is just like a really fun graphic novel about a vampire and a werewolf in love and if you love vampires and werewolves and all that like i'm sure you'll love this story it's really funny it's really cute it definitely has like my type of humor which is quite like dark like morbid humor i loved it and like I said, they're in love. So it's a romance and it's really fun. And then I have to talk about Heartstopper. Honestly, where are all my copies? Here they are. So we have Heartstopper volume one, two, three, and four. And I believe there's gonna be five volumes. And I definitely recommend this entire series. Like it is stunning. And it's basically about two boys who fall in love. One of them is out. One of them is still navigating their sexuality and has to come out to their parents and friends and everything. It's just such a beautiful story. It makes me cry. I love them so much. They're so in love. They are both in high school and there's also a lot of stunning side characters and a lot of good discussions on mental illness and eating disorders. And yeah, so it's not just about the romance, but this is a stunning series that I had to talk about if I'm going to talk about my favorite romances because Nick and Charlie are everything. And I have one more book that I wanted to talk about and and I was thinking if I should include this book, but I was like, I can't film this video without including this book because this is definitely one of my favorite romances ever. And it is fantasy romance and it's the fourth book in a series, which is why I was like, should I even recommend it? But I just have to talk about it. A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah Jomas. Like, of course. Cassian. Honestly, like, 
I've talked about this book a lot this year, but basically, yeah, if you don't know, this is the fourth book in the Cordal Fonts and Razors series, but it's technically the first book in the start of like the second part of that series. It's kind of confusing, but basically this follows Nesta, who is the sister of the main character in the first three books. And this is about Nesta's story and she falls in love and it's stunning and obviously it's not just about the romance because this is a fantasy romance so there are fae there's like a war going on like all this stuff but this has one of my favorite couples of all time some of my favorite romantic saints of all time are in this book like the book is about a book exactly like i always go back to some of my favorite moments of this book because they are just top tier and me and caitlin always joke about how this is the best book of all time but honestly is it even a joke probably not <laughs> like it truly brings me so much happiness it just felt wrong to to do this video without recommending this even though like i said this is the fourth book and i feel like you do need to read the first three books if you want to read this but obviously i think it's worth it and i did really love especially the second book a quarter of miss and fury but yeah yeah cassian where are you anyway i feel like i've been filming for 10 hours i hope this video isn't too long but i hope you enjoyed and i hope you got some good recommendations and if you have any other romance recommendations based on these books please let me know because i'm still kind of a newbie so i'm always looking for more romance book recommendations you guys have given me some stunning ones honestly so thank you and thank you to all the romance authors out there for your service and thank you to audible for sponsoring this video and thank you to all you guys for being amazing always and supporting me and being amazing <laughs> Anyway, if you're looking for more content from me, I have a Patreon where I upload extra content like extra reading vlogs, we do a monthly live show, we do a monthly buddy read, etc. I have all my socials linked below, including my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash gamewithchloe, which is where I stream games and just chatting. Don't forget that you can get a 30-day free trial of Audible by going to audible.com slash bookswithchloe or texting bookswithchloe to 500-500. That information will be in my description box. And yeah, I hope you're all having a good day or night, and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs>